Welcome back to our magic um, ball project. In this video we're going to make a specific type of ball called the magic eight ball which most of you are probably familiar with if you've ever heard of a magic ball. Um, so let's get started. We're going to create a new class for this specific ball. So we're going to say um, magic eight ball. So public class magic eight ball extends magic ball and then we need some open and close parentheses and we're going to need an area for our fields our constructor and our methods and then we're going to create an array to hold our answer so we're going to say string open and close brackets answers so we'll declare the array for our answers um, in the fields and then when we create the ball we will add the answers to our array so we're going to say public magic eight ball And then in our array, we're going to say answers is equal to new string. And we'll have 20 answers in this ball. And you can find a list of these answers online, in like in Wikipedia, if you look under Magic 8 Ball. So now we'll assign a particular answer at a particular location. So we'll say answers at 0 is equal to our string it is certain and then answers at one is equal to it is decidedly so and then answers at two is equal to without a doubt and answers at three is equal to yes definitely and answers at four is equal to you may rely on it And answers at 5 is equal to as I see it. Need some quotes here. Answers at 6 is equal to most likely. Answers at 7 is equal to outlook good. Answers at 8 is equal to signs point yes answers at 9 is equal to yes answers at 10 is equal to reply hazy try again answers at 11 is equal to ask again later Answers at 12 
is equal to better not tell you now. Answers at 13 is equal to cannot predict now. Answers at 14 is equal to concentrate and ask again. Answers at 15 is equal to don't count on it. Answers at 16 is equal to my reply is no. Missing a semicolon up here. Answers at 17 is equal to my source says no. Answers at 18 equal to Outlook. Not so good. And answers at 19 is equal to very doubtful. And there's our 20 choices. So I'm going to go ahead and then save this. And I'm just going to call this Magic 8 Ball, of course, because that's the name of our class. And let's see, what else do we need? We need a, um, now if we go back to Magic Ball, the ones that we need to overwrite are abstract num answers and get answer. So we go back to our ball, and we're going to write those methods. So we say protected int num answers. And the reason we're writing it as protected is because we want other classes to be able, in this um, project, to be able to see this method. Um, but we don't want as much uh, visibility or scope as public. And then we're going to return 20 because there's 20 answers. And then we also need to overwrite our two string. If we go back here, you can see here we have public abstract string get answer. And so we need to overwrite that. And if you want these in the same order as in your subclass, we can just move this down here. And then you can see that they'll be in the same order here in Magic 8-Ball. So there's no confusion. So we'll say public string get answer. And then we're going to return and we want to go into our answers array and then use our get answers index method. And actually, I believe it's called get answer instead of get answer index get answer get answer actually um, we need another method in here we need get answer index
because one is going to return the answer and one is going to return the index of the answer. So let's add another one here that says protected int get answer index. And we're going to return answer index. So we'll need a met. Um, no, I believe that answer is the same as answer index. Let's just go ahead and change it um, so there's no confusion about the answer, which is going to be the um, text and the index to the array. So here is this is going to be answer index, and we're returning answer index. So when we're overriding get and we're overriding the method get answer, we're going into the answer array and using our get answer index method. So again, we're overriding get answer in our magic eight ball class, and that allows us to go into our get answer. Alright, so after that let's just go ahead and hit save to make sure it's saved and then we're going to compile to make sure our project compiles. And we'll check out to see if we have any errors that we need to fix. Alright, so I have one error here that we need a semicolon at the end and let's try to recompile. And it looks like we've compiled with no errors. So if you have any errors, take a couple minutes to fix it before going on to the next step. We, in the next video we'll be doing our um, UI for the Magic 8-Ball. See you next time.